Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Poor Choices Show, the second episode of our hopefully long and extended uh, podcasting here. I, as always, am your host, Chris, joined by my co-host and best friend, Mr. David. Hello, everyone. We've made it this far. Now let's make some poor choices. Pretty cool. That's not warm. <laughs> Fuck. All right. As always, we um, each have a, a beer that we've never had before. So, what uh, what do you got today? I've got a. It's called Watermelon Heat Wave from Blake's Hard Cider. It's a watermelon and chili hard cider. Spice level medium. I was going to say, is it spicy? Spicy beer. Okay. Let's find out. Yeah, there you go. Hey, nice glass. Is it good? Good. It is. It takes a second for the heat to kick. Like it? Okay. I want you to uh, guess. The name of it is called Seasick Crocodile. If you had to like throw out a, oh, that's going to be this flavor. What kind of beer? It is a sour ale. Who makes it? Um, I'm actually with the same brand as last episode, Prairie Artisan. And it's called what? Seasick Crocodile. I'll show you the, the can first, to give you a hint. The first thing that comes to mind is like a a cucumber, but I don't think you'd buy a cucumber beer. <laughs> You're correct. I would not. Um, uh, does that does that give you a hint at all? I mean, it's, it's got some theming to it. Uh, it's it's uh, red. Green and white with uh, Christmas presents and Santa and some sleighs and some crocodiles chasing Santa. I have no idea because it, it doesn't. I I think some kind of mint or peppermint or evergreen or something, but I know you don't like that either. It's uh it's pretty holiday festive for it being February. Um, it is cranberries, ginger, cinnamon, and nutmeg sour ale. Let's see what we got. I'd, I'd call it a, a cinnamon sour That's what it tastes like Okay Well do you like I, it? Yeah I recommend I think uh, I'm at the wrong time of year to be drinking it I could see myself like You know at the Christmas party Having a couple of these or something like that But um Yeah like good. sitting down watching Watching Die Hard sipping on one of those How dare So that is a huge split between David and myself is uh, I am very anti Die Hard being a Christmas. Very anti. I'm not even so much so gung-ho on the fact that it is. I just know how against it you are. So against so, it. I, so I like I like, <laughs> I like fuel in the fire. Like when people mention it, I, I just like, you can see the steam just exit my ears. It's just looking like at, the Looking flames. like a locomotive. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> It's, it's well, got to cool. be up there with people calling you buddy, huh? Yeah, it's a big pet. I don't have many pet peeves, but just buddy. And it's a, you know, just a common term of endearment. Like, thanks, buddy, or right. hey, bud, how's it going? Um, but I get, in the line of work, I mean, I also get a lot of uh, chief. Pal. Not so much pal. Uh, no. I get, I get boss a lot. Thanks, boss. Thanks, chief. How about hoss? No, I haven't. I don't think I'm uh, hossy enough. I don't know. I don't no, know. yeah. That's, um, okay, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, but for whatever reason, buddy, <laughs> and it's not like I'm going to judge you or make it. Right. Just, just irks fun. you a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Just just one of those. You're Everyone's just, got that. You're just that a very buddyable person. Well, and that's probably why I get it so much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> true, true. Okay. So for the, the 30 people that tuned in for our yeah, first episode you. we have some follow-up to uh the super bowl bets that we made yes now when we went to place them some of them that we had intended on placing uh i.e the taylor swift ones weren't still available <laughs> so we had to we had to choose some different ones so for the pacheco under 68 and a half yards we won that one excellent for the McCaffrey over 91 and a half. We lost that one. 
for your yeah. bias. Mahomes under 261 and a half. We lost. Yeah. For for the Purdy over 249 and a half, we won. Although yeah. I think we might have overtime to thank for that one. I'm not sure how close yeah. he was before going into that. That's a good point. Uh, obviously, for the San Francisco minus two, we lost. And then for our Taylor Swift bets, we went with Taylor Swift shown after first Chiefs touchdown. We lost that one. I'm going to have to chalk that one up to Travis not being the one to score. Oh, we put yes for that? Uh, we did put yes for that one. I think we were under the impression that Travis would be the first one to score. Yeah. And it was who? It and was um was it Valdez Scanling? I think it might have been. I can't remember. But yeah, I, I remember. Been. Yeah. That's okay. okay. Can't win them all. Yeah, well, we we won most of them for the the well, actually I think we were split. But for the next one, how long will Taylor Swift be shown? Uh over under 25 and a half seconds. We won that one. Yeah, I'm not that sure was what that ended up such being. Such an easy just, one. Just, I think it was uh it was almost a minute. I think it was 50-something seconds was the total. Okay. Okay. And then how long after kickoff will Taylor Swift be shown uh, with a game clock over under seven and a half minutes? And we won that one. So I guess it took till at least halfway through the first quarter to, to show her. Okay. So, it, so we, went, we went 50%? <clears throat> we did. If you can't tell how big of a high roller David and I are with our uh, dollar bets here. Uh, it was for fun, though. I mean, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't it's hard, a, it's a hard money get, maker. Right, and it's hard to get Chris to put money on things he doesn't like, and Taylor Swift and Patrick Mahomes are two of those things. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Fair. It just, which is, uh, I think, just justified based off of that AFC championship. Um, for those who don't know, can't see it behind me. I am a Ravens fan, being from Maryland, um, that was, that was a tough pill to swallow for sure. Absolutely. Uh, as you can tell by the shirt, I'm also from Maryland, but <laughs> not not a or, Ravens fan. You didn't listen to the first episode where we discussed. Uh, yeah, if you could see behind him in, in the blue neon, uh, or if you're listening, there is a blue neon uh, certain tight end for the Dallas Cowboys on it, which is really cool looking. David made that himself, actually. So we have what... I intended on being an entirely 90s podcast, but I guess Chris brought yeah, some 90s stuff. I didn't do all of my homework. I just kind of finished what I did in class, and I got home and didn't do it anymore. I, don't I got think some. You paid attention to the assignment. Well, I got, uh, yeah. This is, it's, you know That's what, it, it's a uh, teacher to rounding up, so, you know, it's, it's a D. All right, we'll curve this one. Curb it. Yeah, yeah. You there put you your go. name on the project, get the A all today. Right. All right. I want you to rank these 90s boy bands blindly. Mm. Okay. First one's going to be Hanson. Oh, man. I was a Hanson fan Damn. boy growing up. I know it. That's why I, I mean, gave it to you first. I wanted to see where it would go. Zach, Tyler, and Isaac. I still I had posters. I mean, uh, Should have kept those and put those on the wall behind you. If it's for me, my this childhood is for you. in the '90s, Hanson is going to go to number one. I'm probably going to get a lot of number hate for one that, right off the bat. Yeah, yeah. Well, if our target demographic is the ones listening, then they they may very well agree. <laughs> All right, number two is going to be the Backstreet Boys. Uh, they can stay there at number two. I love it. Fair. That's easy. This is so far so I like good. it. Yeah. You're happy. You're happy. I feel like I should have started with something different. Yeah. I feel like the yeah. remainder of this list is probably. I can probably only think of end up two more off the top of my head. But go ahead, hit me. All right, number three is going to be Boys to Men. Okay, I'm going to put them at. So I didn't listen to a lot of them, but they did have some hits <laughs> that I did listen to. Uh, I'm going to put them at <laughs> four. Respect. Four. Putting them at four. Yeah. Number four is going to be New Kids on the Block. Didn't really listen to them, so that makes it pretty simple. They're going to the basement at number five. Number five. Mm -hmm. And I think this is going to end uh, probably how you would like 
number five is going to be in sync. Yeah, it, it, it did. That was perfect. They're number three. I would unblindly rank Wouldn't that change the exact same. No, that was uh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I'll good. take it. So it's ended at what? Hanson, Backstreet, in sync, Boys to Men, New Kids. That's how it ended. Yeah, I'm happy with it. I love it. Yeah, I wasn't listening to R&B in the 90s, not until uh, seventh grade. I still remember I got my first rap CD, and it almost killed my dad to buy it, but he bought it for me. It was uh, whatever album has Snoop Dogg's Drop It Like It's Hot on it. Um, nope. Well, so a Snoop Dogg album. Yeah, that was my first, but my brother had... Like Master P, uh, you know, he had Biggie, he had a few CDs, but it really wasn't my thing until, let's say, middle school is when it was a cool, it was a cool, dude, no more boy bands, no more Hanson, I couldn't go into middle school and say, you guys hear that new Hanson album? Man. Bro, I would, yeah, I would, you had to fit in. I would get thrown out, yeah, absolutely. Did I ever tell you about the time my mom came home and we were all out back had the boombox out there and had an Eminem CD playing. I think it was, it was, it was whatever one, the white one with like the black lettering on it. Yeah. 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 So she gets home, home from work. We're all out there hanging out and she opens the back door to ask me whatever. And it's one of the interludes where it's his <laughs> agent or whatever, leaving him a voicemail. Yeah. And he's like, all you're doing is rapping about homosexuals and Vicodin. And my mom was like, just, Lip. She took it, snapped it in half, and just chucked it. So well, then Mom. I had uh, the first rap CD I remember buying was Bone Crusher. Oh, and that was at Tower Records, I think, when that was over by Fridays. Yeah, I bought from that same one. Um, what was Fifties album with Indie Club? Get Rich or Die Trying. Yeah, that was my first personal purchase, which would have been. We were in eighth grade. I still remember I had a, uh, <laughs> I had a red portable CD player for iPods and those like hook behind the head headphones. You remember those? Right. And I, I would thought it was, I would sitting on the bus, just I'm in the club <laughs> jamming out, <laughs> jamming out. Yeah. 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 Not quite, not quite the club, but I got you. Yeah. You know, it was close enough. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, uh, Getting away from the 90s theme that I didn't do my homework on, um, I want you to blindly rank these destination vacations. So these locations for vacations. These destination location vacations. Let's do it. All right, deal. All right, so blind rank these destination vacations, starting with Hawaii. We'll put Hawaii at three. Just nice medium can't go wrong with it. Number three. It's beautiful, but it it seems a little cliche. Okay. How about Paris? Let's put Paris at four. Not a Paris fan below Hawaii, huh? I would love to go to Paris. I just don't know if the experience would be worth the language barrier. Hmm. Okay. Fair enough. So I if can understand. You know, some other some other beautiful place on there that you're like I can't speak whatever the language is, but I'm just gonna be sitting in a well, hut well, on David, the water all day every day anyway. Your next one is Japan. I'm gonna put Japan at five. Wow. Okay. I Japan's another one that I really want to go to, but I, I sort of have this bias towards Japan ever since watching the grudge. <laughs> just don't go in any attics and you'll be fine. Yeah, so you'll be fine. If I ever do go Staying away from the attic. But don't invite Sarah Michelle Geller, and you're good. Right, you're exactly. Good. Um, all right, number four is going to be <laughs> London. My dad told me that London's his favorite place he's ever gone. Oh, wow. And he's well traveled. So yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gone some places. Mm -hmm. Let's put London at two. Oh, so you're not sure. I'm going to put. I'm going to put my. Put my fate in your hands. Well, I think you did well. Uh, my last one is Turks and Cake. Gladly. Number yes. one. So, unblindly, that would be your number mm -hmm. one, Rickard. I think so, yeah. Okay. Okay, so there was a little mixture there of, you know, you had some tropical, some city, you know, some 
and that's about it tropical and city but yeah yeah, yeah i like that yeah. I'm, okay. I'm happy with that one all right i want you to name the top five grossing movies of the 90s <laughs> as the movie buff you are i'm not sure if that started pre pre-millennium but um let's see no, what we got. it definitely didn't definitely uh i got older got into it uh, i mean titanic obviously it's got to be number one. Titanic is number one. That's like yeah. one all time, isn't it? Or it was for the longest time until um, Avatar. It, or... it was till Avatar, and then it was until okay. Avatar. Avatar. So Titanic. Yeah. Right. So it's still okay. top three after Titanic. Before. Let's say Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park's number two. So far, so good. I don't know if I can get to five. Let's see. Um, Home Alone. <laughs> it is not Home Alone. Not Home Alone. Okay. Home Alone is not on the list. Are any of them sequels? None of them... None of them are sequels, but I think all of them have sequels. One might not. If it does, it might be one of those that's kind of forgotten about. Okay. okay. Um, oh, gosh. How about... Now that didn't come out in the 90s, I was going to say... Sorcerer of Stone, but that came out in the 2000s. Uh, right. Man, you hit me with a good one here. Let's see. Give me, I need, I'm going to need a hint for number three. One of them has a lot of sequels. Mm. A lot of sequels. Let's and see. And prequels. Star Wars? And prequels. Star Wars. Star Wars Episode One is number three. Oh, that hurts. That was a top grossing <laughs> movie in that decade. Yeah. Not a popular Star Wars say that not popular well um, there couldn't have been many more popular ones at the time that's, that's true let's see all right let me think that's got my juice flowing uh, how about the mario number f- no that one's not on there not on there number four might have been a tearjerker for you at the time kid tearjerker uh homeward bound yeah is it wow no no, no oh. it's not Nope, I said no. Nope. <laughs> you said yeah. Um, okay. Not homeward bound. Tearjerker. Not homeward bound. You're in. You're in the right vicinity. I remember getting really sad during Dante's Peak. Is that one of them? Nope. Uh, stick in the stick in the realm of animals. Airbun. No, that was a tearjerker for me, but that didn't make the list. Animals, huh? TJ. Mutant Ninja Turtles? No. No. A more ferocious. Oh, the Lie King. There you go. Yeah. I thought that one might give it away. Yeah. That's number four. Can okay, you number five? One more. Is it animated or no? It's not animated. Not animated. Okay. Let's see. Would I have seen it as a kid in the 90s? Or was it a, not rated for me? You might have seen it. I don't know that you would have wanted to see it. I doubt you saw it when it came out. Like in, you wouldn't have gone to the theaters to see it. Oh boy. I'm going to need a hint. Will Smith is in it. Independence Day? That's it. Is it? I could that's name it. another thought... 90s Will Smith movie to save my life. So I'm glad that's it. When did, when did Men in Black come out? Oh. oh. That's I'm what I say. Thought maybe that would get you. Late nineties, early two thousands. Nineteen ninety seven. Wow, almost on Independence Day. So we had Titanic, Jurassic Park, Star Wars Episode One, The Lion Ugh. King, and Independence Day. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So Good job. I'm proud the, of you. No, I think I saw all those in the nineties. If I had to guess, I think yeah. I did. I think, I but did. probably not Independence Day in theaters. Um, no, we had that on VHS. All right, so how about a little family feud action for you, David? How's that sound? Let's do it. Okay, so you get, what, 10 seconds per question? Well, you get 60 seconds total. Are we, are we playing fast money rules? Yeah, I mean, if you're, you know, taking some time, I'm going have to have to hit you with the Steve Harvey and press you here. All right, that works. All right, number one. Name a house you never want to be in. A haunted house. 
Name something associated with vampires. Blood. Name something in a bakery a baker might call his wife. Cupcake. Name something in a person's closet that only come out comes out on special occasions. A suit. If you could go to the land of Oz, what would you ask the wizard for? Money. All right, you ready for your totals? Yeah, I think I am. So number one, name a house you never want to be in. You said a haunted house. It's our number one answer, 27 points. Well done. Uh, number number two was name something associated with vampires, and you said blood. Blood was number two, but 29 points at number two. <laughs> number one number was... one, Twilight. It was, or, or Sunset Twilight. Um, oh, I was two. thinking the movie is not actual Twilight. Oh, I hope that's not what they... That's, it what, could that's what they mean. Yeah, that's a hundred percent what they mean. That's unfortunate. Um, name something in a bakery a baker might call his wife, and you said cupcake. Uh, it's an eight pointer. It's not bad. If you had to guess number one, what would you? Say? Honey bun. Yes, exactly. Honey slash buns. Name something in a person's closet only comes out special occasions. Suit is number one at thirty five. <laughs> And if you could go to the land of Oz, what would you ask the wizard for? You said money, number one at 37. Should have played that one to 150. Man. So let me get you your total real quick. Real quick. I've always said that if I was going to go on one game show, it would be Family Feud. Because I smoke the Fast Money round every single time. Well, maybe you should because you just got 136 on your Fast Money. Meaning your Hell yeah. partner would only need 64. Which is very doable, right? <laughs> Right, but that means the rest of my family would have to be smart for me to even get there. Who would you, you'd have, let's see, your sister, your dad, your mom? No, I think my, my starting five would probably be future wifey. Yeah. Dad. Yeah. Sister. And then you get one more. Stepbrother? Maybe. I feel like he says some dumb shit sometimes. Okay. Maybe grandma. I feel like grandma's... Oh, yeah. She's kind of that out-of-the-box thinker. And she would flirt with Steve. It'd be funny to watch. Nice. Well, well done. Good job. All right. We're going to do a draft of things in the 90s. Yes, and it could be anything. Anything at all. But it has to be from that decade, from our childhood. So David and I were both born right before the 90s, and we grew up throughout the So this is basically all the stuff that cultivated in in our our childhood uh well i'm gonna you start can, us you off you can tell them we're old you can tell them we're old we're 80s want, babies i don't want to say that word. um that's all right well yeah go for, ahead and start us off for me my number one nickelodeon i mean that is that is it that is my childhood nickelodeon that's so it. that that's, that was that's a good one that was an easy one for me without a doubt that's on the list um, just remember, this isn't just your childhood. This is just all time greats. Not that, that that's not a spectacular answer. Oh, I get it, but I'm also drafting for for me, right? So, like, right, well, what lineup would I want if I'm looking at the nineties? You know what I mean? Yeah, now, I get there's stuff that might be okay. above some of this, but I, I think we'll be okay. right. No, that was that was high on the list. And with the first round pick, I'll go with the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Okay, just with their uh, three Super Bowls. Okay. Now, here's the thing, though. Were you a Cowboys fan in the 90s? I know your dad was. Of course I was. Okay. I remember watching the 95 Super Bowl. Okay. okay. But it doesn't matter. I'm a fan now, and they were awesome <laughs> then. I am, I, it's your draft. I'm cool. I was just one. I was just one. Uh, all right. Well, my number two, it kind of coincides in a way. Um, don't take it. But this That's was my, my next pick. Don't this was don't do it. My don't, huge part. Don't do it. Blockbuster. Okay, you didn't do it. I didn't do I it. I had that on the list. Okay, Blockbuster is my number two <laughs> pick because we went at least once a week, made sure that those VHSs were reround before you returned them, and and when you went to that wall, the new movie that came out, and they were all sold out. You go up to the counter and you say, yeah. Uh, you say, hey, do you have anything in the return pile over there? Do you have, do you have any Independence Day over there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you have any Star Wars Episode One? 
Yep. Yep. A thousand percent. Okay. Cool. I like that. Yeah, that was on. I had that on the list as well. I'm happy with it. I'm going to go with my number two pick is Pokemon cards. Okay. I also had that on my list. That was up there. Or Pokemon in general will we'll fully encompass the games, the cards, the show, yeah. everything. Huge part of our elementary into middle school was was uh was Pokemon, which I remember you telling me the story of your dad telling you, Oh, these aren't gonna amount to anything. It's just a, a fad, you know, that kids are going through and uh look at the multi billion yeah, right dollar. We went and, right. Right before we went and saw Detective Pikachu, right? Yeah, yeah, we sure did. Uh huh. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's a big one. I mean, we had the games, we had the cards. Um, I the sad part about my cards is I don't know, parents don't know what happened to them, but they were all Gen One, great cards worth a yeah. lot of money nowadays. That makes two of us. I'm sure they probably went to Goodwill or something like that, and somebody made a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Right. Someone doesn't have to shop at Goodwill anymore. Well, now, now I'm in a little bit of a bind. Um, cause that was, that was getting there for me, but with my third overall pick, uh, you can, you can see the theme I'm kind of sticking with here. Mine is going to be, um, watching TGIF every Friday night. And that was, oh gosh, full house, um, step by step family matters. <laughs> oh gosh. It's been a while. You can't tell, but that was, yeah. that was, that was the, no matter what was happening on a Friday, we were sitting <laughs> down from six to nine watching, watching that every week, right. every week. Yep. Mm-hmm. Every week. All right. With my third round pick, I'm going to take Nintendo 64. Oh, you know what? I'm kind of upset. I'm you about got that. to. Is kinda, that on the list? Kind of upset. You took that. Yeah, that's there. All okay. right. Yeah. Wow. Good one. That's a real good one. Kind of jealous you have that. Um, yeah, I'm taking it and I'm running with it. So I got two more, huh? Two more. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to go with uh, with Goosebumps. It's my number four. Oh, I was a big okay. goose Goosebump. You know, had the books. The book fair would come to school, get some books from there, some Goosebumps, and I had dozens. I mean, dozens and. Now, did you did you do the show too, or just the books? Uh, the show, the movies, the sh- I guess. Yeah, the movies they scared me a little bit as a kid. Yeah, uh, I did. Understandable. Have the um, on VHS, I had the girl who couldn't take the mask off her her face. Uh, it was like yeah. that green monster mask. Um, and then I also right. had the one where there was that plant in the basement that would eat eat you, or yeah, that. Suck that you took in the form of her her dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I would only That's watch the one those. I, had. I think that with, was the only one with like the lights on, and it was in the middle of the day. <laughs> My right. parents were home, you know. Um, yeah. So going goosebumps number four. Going goosebumps. All right, I like it. I didn't have that one on my list, and I'm a little upset <laughs> that I did not. All right, with my fourth round pick, I'm going to go with. AIM, AOL Instant Messenger. So I had AOL on there. I don't know if I used it as much in the 90s as I did the 2000s, but it was definitely, we had AOL. You got that disc every few months, 4.0, 4.1, 5.0, 6.0, and it would show up in the mail. Well, yeah, I guess now that you mentioned it, I don't know that I used AIM a whole lot anyway, so we'll just go with all-encompassing AOL. That was the internet, basically. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go with the inter- the internet. <laughs> the internet. I think it was new enough that we could <laughs> that we could just call that the classification. I'm good with that. Okay. Um, well, with my last pick, it wasn't it wasn't hard. I had to go with my Baltimore Ravens, founded in 1996, staying strong. Mm. Okay, I see. I see what you're doing there. So that was... But were they good then? Absolutely not. They were garbage. Here. I feel um, like you're knocking down your draft a little bit with that one. But then five years later, Super Bowl champs, baby. Well, I guess I'll stick in the sports realm. Oh, okay. And I think it's it's hard it's hard not to be crowned with this one. Mm-hmm. But with my last pick, I'm going to take Michael Jordan. Okay. 
I mean, that's, uh, he's the goat of goats. So, I mean, right. Not the, I don't want to say not the biggest fan. Didn't follow him much, but it's iconic. Hard to dispute that one. Right. Yeah. Probably one of the greatest things to ever happen in the 90s. Yeah. That's a good one. That's really good. What did you, did you have any honorable mentions? Anything you almost said or any, uh, any backups in case I stole something? So I was between Goosebumps and Harry Potter. Okay. I thought about going Harry Potter, but I didn't think it was prevalent enough in the 90s to well sure, I, sort of pull it as, as much as Jordan did. Yeah. And then that's fair. I wouldn't either. Um, Harry Potter in fifth grade, I, I read that. So that I remember that. And that was in the 98-ish, 99, give or take. I also had eating inside of a pizza hut, which was big. Which you can still do, I believe. Uh, yeah. I think they're... You probably few, wouldn't, but... Few and far between. But, I mean, we're talking right. packed house every every weekend night or after a baseball <laughs> game or something. I mean, packed house to get into pizza hut. So that every, was big. Right. Everybody stuffing up before going home and watching TGIF. That's it. Um... I also had boy bands, which is oddly enough, I put that, you know, Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, all of them. And then my last one was the Game Boy. That was a big Game Boy player. Okay. Surprised you didn't rebuttal the N64 with that one. Yeah, I'm surprised I didn't even think of it. I, uh, yeah, that one, that was written down in front of you? Not N64. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, rebuttal the N64 with the Game Boy oh, as your next Oh, yeah, pick. but the others were just more uh, iconic to right. me, I guess, you know. Okay. So some of them that I had were the Power Rangers. Thought about it. I had Toy Story. Oh, that's a good one. I like that. I had Pogs. Oh, man. I would have, I might have taken Pogs if I thought of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never played them, collected them, had, God, probably hundreds, but. Did you have those, this big, like the, the tubes? Acryl acry acrylic tubes, yeah. Uh huh. To store them in, right. Absolutely. Yep, sure did. Mm -hmm. And then my last one was, and I, I'm a little upset I didn't take it. It was just having no responsibilities. <laughs> That's a good one. You should have taken that one. Yeah. That's a good one. I feel like I could have started with that and everything else would have been irrelevant. Well, I thought about... Those were, those were the days. I thought about Ravens at number one, uh, but then once you took Cowboys, I was like, yeah, I'll wait. Because I, right. I had to take them regardless. Yeah. I definitely went more of the, what was my 90s top five, as opposed to, I think yours, I mean, yours had some, but I think yours was also, like you said, iconic 90s. Right. Without a doubt. All, yeah. all time great things. Well, not to say the stuff that I said wasn't iconic, but Ravens is a little biased. Um, right. They weren't quite yet iconic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that was good. I like that. That was fun. All right. So next I have some just 90s facts. No no games or quizzes or anything. Just some, some gee whiz that I've come across looking up some topics to do for this episode. Okay. Uh, we might not go through... Well, yeah, we might be able to go through all of them. There's not too many. Um, first, did you know that Microsoft Office was released for Windows in 1990? But it was originally released the year before for Macs. I didn't. I didn't either. Next, did you know that Justin Timberlake's mom came up with the name NSYNC, which was the last letter of each band member's name? Oh, no, I did not. So I didn't know that either. Wow. You know what? When you think about it now, it's kind of like, it's a, it's a, I like their music and I'm going to listen to it, but right. Where, where'd that name? It's a weird because, because they sound in sync, but yeah, well, I think that was always the assumption was just, oh, they're, you know, a group of guys and they sing together and it sounds in sync. Hmm. And let's spell I think it. that was sort of the, yeah. Let's spell right. it in a cool way, right? Well, that's so, interesting. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Yeah, I've uh, um, okay. I like that one a lot better than your Microsoft Office one. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. So, 
Next, the Backstreet Boys, on the other hand, were named after a flea market in Orlando called the Backstreet Market. Well, I don't know if I would admit that if I was that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that th- it's a great just catchy... Just... Yeah, just keep that, you know. Oh, we used to play stickball in the back streets or something. I don't know. Make something up. Right. <laughs> just keep that one locked away with the <laughs> Dr. Pepper ingredients. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I like it, though. That's good. All right. Next, in 1993, a Russian astronaut brought his Game Boy to space, and he was allowed to bring only one game. Do you want to try to guess what game he brought? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say he brought, I think the obvious guess would be Mario, but I'm going to say Tetris. It is Tetris. Okay. Good job. All right, next. To get the sound for the T-Rex in Jurassic Park, the crew slowed down a recording of a Jack Russell Terrier playing with a rope. How do you get... I'm just trying to figure out... So, like, they're tugging on the rope and the dog's, like, growling? Just growling, thing? right. So they, they okay. took that and they slowed it down to, you know, make it make it deeper. I need to go I watch thought, Jurassic that was Park funny. now just to listen to it and go, the dog slowed down? Wow. That's I don't know cool. if you're going to be able to watch it the same anymore. It's not as intimidating when you realize it's a Jack Russell and not a T-Rex. Yeah. Huh. So I wonder, because even like the newer ones, I would say have a pretty comparable sound to the first one. So I wonder if they just enhance that sound or or just completely... Right, just do some remixing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I like that. Look into that one when we do the 2000s, 2010s episode. Next, did you know that Mattel sued MCA Records over the song Barbie Girl by Aqua for copyright infringement? Just because Mattel made Barbie? Mattel made Barbie and Aqua made a song. But furthermore, the case went to the U.S. Court of Appeals where Judge Alex Kaczynski said that both parties were advised to chill. (laughs) That's so 90s. Hey, why don't we just just chill? Yeah. Will both of you guys do me a favor and just chill? Now, when they walk into the room, do they give them like a, oh, you know what? That's not 90s. I was going to say like a what's that? I don't think that's 90s. I think that was a little later. A little later. A little later. Okay. That's funny, though. All right. Another one that I think you'll appreciate. The 90s boy band Hanson has their own beer brand called Mm Hops. Brilliant. Oh, you know what? That is brilliant. Whoever is in charge of their marketing... (laughs) Kudos. Well done. It's probably them. Maybe that was their idea. Could be. Could be. Now, I know I named all three of them earlier. You want me Zach... to do it again? No, I was going to say Zach, Tyler, oh. and Isaac. But I think it's Taylor, isn't it? Or Taylor, I'm sorry. Taylor and Isaac. What did they all do in the band? Sang Mbop. Yes. Taylor sang. Um, Zach it... drummed? Zach drummed. Yeah, he was a little younger brother with the long hair. Well, I guess they all had long and hair. And Isaac Isaac guitar. I want to say it was a bass guitar, but I could be wrong. A bass what? Guitar. You said it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Touche, sir. Touche. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. I have I have two more. Okay. Did you know that eighty members of the crew for the movie Titanic got sick on the same day? Some were even hospitalized due to hallucinations, and it turned out that someone had spiked the lobster chowder with PCP. The fuck? How's that make you feel? Well, my first thought was, whose idea was it to cater lobster salad when you're out working on the water and the ocean and like you're on boats and shit? Well, I don't think... So I heard that they weren't in the ocean. They were in a huge pool. Yeah. Like an Olympic swimming pool. And I guess every shot on the boat's just a big, nice studio set somewhere, like a sound studio right. somewhere. Yeah. Um, Not that it takes away from it. I mean, like you said, they're still filming right. on the water, but. Yeah, I don't know. If I was on that movie, I'd be like, yeah, can I get something not seafood related? Maybe that's just me. And lastly, did you know that Doug Funny originated in Florida? from a grapefruit juice commercial, and it wasn't until two years later that the character made his Nickelodeon debut. I'm going to have to look that up. So did he, he like, look the same and everything like that? 
There you go. Fruit juice like Fort Lauderdale. Well, grapefruit juice isn't a place that studious and mature college kids go on spring break. Wow. A refreshing break in any day and can put an about extra that. spring in your step as well. Of course, grapefruit juice isn't packed with fun-loving vacationers, but it is packed with the refreshing taste that everyone That's fantastic. Likes. How much do you think Nickelodeon paid for the rights to use that character? Not a whole lot. I had to guess. They've just said, hey, we're going to use this guy. Why don't you chill? Yeah, it's like, like Judge Kaczynski. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Never knew that. No. Good good homework. Yeah, all right, you got a gold star for today. For sure. I did mine. <laughs> Why don't uh, why don't I throw you into the realm of sports? How do you feel about that? I'd much rather be there than in geography class. So okay. let's do it. All right. Top ten list: greatest athletes of all time. David, is this me guessing or is this me ranking my own? This is you guessing. They are already ranked according to the top ten dot com. These are the top ten athletes, greatest athletes of all time. I think you chose this just to make me say his name. Maybe. All right, we'll put Michael on there. Michael is the number one ranked greatest athlete of all time. So kudos so to your uh, your draft of taking him in the 90s. Okay. All right. Is Tiger Woods on there? He's not. It's a good guess, but he's not. Where'd you get this list? Uh, this is courtesy of the top10.com. So you're the best at your respected sport and you don't make the top 10 list? Yeah, and there's a couple repeat sports on here. Hmm. Most most of them are individual sports, but there's a couple that are uh, shared. Okay. So I'm going to guess Michael Phelps isn't on there then? He is. He's we're ranked number calling... He is ranked number five. Okay, so we're going to put swimming on there, but not golf? It's greatest athletes. Now, I would rank Michael Phelps as a greater athlete than Tiger Woods, just based on his gold medal merits be okay, the that's, all-time that's fair. greatest right. Olympic medalist that ever lived. I mean, and a homegrown Maryland boy, so, you know, really good to see him on right. there. Right. So, as a golfer, are, do you take offense to them not considering golfers athletes? There's one name on here that I would have replaced Tiger Woods with. The rest, I I agree with. As far as their rank on the yeah. list, debatable, but them being on the list, I would say, okay. On the list. All right, let's get go ahead and get it out of the way and put Tom Brady on there. He is not. That's good. That's such a relief. Thank God. Yeah, he is not on there. All right, so this really is going just individual then. Yep. There's only two names, eh, two and a half names that share sports. Most of them, like I said, are going to be their individual. Okay, but... I'm saying even if it is a team sport, are they going off the individual? Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. For example, Bo Jackson. Yeah, Bo Jackson's going to be number eight. And he was part of that shared because he was a multi-sport guy. Okay. Okay, so that's what you mean by I thought you meant mm-hmm. individual as in swimming or shared as in like a team sport. No, shared as in like played the same sport. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, how about Dion? Is not on there. So you have Jordan at one, Phelps at five, and Bo at eight so far. And no Dion. No Dion. This dude played a football game and a baseball game in the same day. That is correct. Um, no. There's only one true football player on, on the list. Okay, as in that's the only sport he played. Correct. Is it current or is it older? It is not current. Or more current, I guess. Um, yeah, he's, he's more, yeah, yeah. more, er, our life's part with the nineties then, huh? Mm-hmm. A little bit. J- Jerry Rice. Close. Randy Moss. No, you got farther away. Farther away. Barry Sanders? No, still getting farther away. Farther away is in position? Team. Ronnie Lott. Not Ronnie Lott. How was, was I close as in the? The right team? Yeah. It's got to be Steve Young, then. It's not Steve Young. The other one. Drink to this one. (laughs) 
That's an art Joe? Steve Young. Yep, Joe Montana. Why? He is ranked number 10 on this list. And I'll tell you, the picture of him had his, his hand full of rings, and I went, yeah, I get it, but... Yeah, how many how many jackets does Tiger have? Yeah, so he was the name that I would should... replace with Tiger Woods. It should be Steve over Joe. Steve's the one that ran. Don't shoot the message. He's obviously a better athlete. <laughs> so we agree that Joe maybe shouldn't be the not to take away from his his accolades and yeah. If but... it's going pure athleticism, then everybody that I named to include Jerry, Randy, and Barry, well, it's not all be it's, there. It's not going to be pure. It's greatest athletes. All the time. Mm. So, yeah, to not know. include Tiger and include Joe over the other three, I said. We're, we're in agreement. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we got Jordan 1, Phelps 5, Bo at 8, and Montana at 10. Some big names on this list. Big boys. Yeah, just the whole, the whole like, it's the word I'm looking for. Whatever well, go, of this list is just throwing me for a loop. Go through each, each there, sport, like, and who would you name as the best in that sport? Babe Ruth. Yes, Babe Ruth is number six. Are there any more baseball? Um, there's one that played baseball, amongst other things. Yeah. Older, older. Uh, baseball, <laughs> Olympics, football. Don't know if I'll get that one. That's probably right, that's keep going the toughest them. one. Yeah, keep going through them. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what other sports. Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky is number three on the list. Is there any more hockey? No, he's the only hockey. All right, let's see. You got one more that's. Oh, I'm sure there's just an Olympian. Good. One that's just an Olympian. Simone Biles. Uh, no. I'd an say Olympian at what? The biggest name besides Michael Phelps that I think of when it comes to the Olympics is this guy. What was he an Olympian in? A sport. Like an actual sport, not like pole vaulting. Uh, it was track and field related. Ah, uh, okay, okay, got it. Jesse. Nope, the other one. The Usain. More... Yeah, so you go. Usain Bolt is number four. Um, So you're missing number two, number seven, and number nine. Um, two, seven, and nine. Two and nine are their own sport. And then seven is the guy that was baseball. The multi-sport. Olympics, yeah, football. Give me a time frame on seven. Uh, I want to say... I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to disgrace the man. Is it like um, 60s to 80s, 90s to, to 10s? No, it is going to be, uh, I'd, I'd call it 1910 to 1930. You know the name, but I don't I don't think you'd ever get it. Uh, it's going to be Jim Thorpe. He's a running back, right? I think. Um, he was, but he was, uh, we had two, two gold I medals didn't... in the Olympics. Um, he was a baseball player, 252 career average. Um, and was a running back, Pro Football Hall of Fame, College Football Hall of Fame, and then he won his gold medals in the decathlon and the pentathlon. Is the decathlon still an Olympic event? I believe it is. I believe it is. Interesting. Well, we'll find out. In a yeah, couple I definitely months didn't here. realize. Yeah, I definitely didn't realize he was that old. Yeah, yeah, he's from uh, the old Great Depression era, pre World War II. Me, the top ten. Mm. Good for him. Go for him. Mm. Okay. Can you give me sports? Ooh. Well, I'm going to give you the number nine sport, which is soccer. <laughs> is he considered the best ever? Arguably. I mean, nowadays, people might say current players are better, the greatest of all time. But Okay. So it's Pele? It's Pele. Yep. Number nine. You got one more. It's number two? At number two, below Jordan and above Gretzky. And you can't give me the sport. No, that'll give it away. Um, not a, I don't want to say not traditional, but not in the realm of the major sports, if that makes sense. So it's not your hockey, baseball, football, right. basketball. It, can you tell me if it's a team sport or an individual sport? It is an individual sport. It's a good question. Individual. It's like Roger Federer. Oh, that's ah. a good Good guess, but no. Did I at least get the sport? It is not the right sport. And it's not golf? It is not golf. No. Individuals. Or... Ooh. No. If they didn't put Tiger. And each match, is it's always 1v1. It's 
always one dude against another dude. Ah, uh, okay, okay, yeah, that that was good. But it could be two people. <laughs> how smart? How smart are the people that made this list? Think about who's already been named. It's the obvious choice. Okay, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali, number two. So we got Michael Jordan, number one. Muhammad, number two. Gretzky's number three. Bolt, number four. Babe, I'm sorry, Michael Phelps, number five. Ruth, number six. Jim Thorpe, seven. Bo Jackson, eight. Pele, nine. Joe Montana, at ten. Mm. Yeah, there's a a lot of people that I think, not, you know, no disrespect to Joe, but a lot of people that were more, I guess, deserving athletes. I would say deserving. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Deserving athletes. Like, how, how does Dion not make the list as a multi sport? And he was good at them. Unlike our number one, who was terrible at baseball. Yeah, but he golfed, so he's, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Two or three. Yeah. So when I said I would, I would replace Iger for Joe, I'd have to do more research on Jim, but he's in two Hall of Fames. He has two gold medals. I mean, that's, that's tough not to. Yeah, but at the same time, his competition couldn't have been that large in 1910. Well, the medals were. That's, he's competed against the whole world, but as far as yeah. Hall of Fame goes. The Hall, I mean, yeah. How many How many other 1915 Hall of Famers can you name? There's right. probably six people in the league. Right. <laughs> I want to know if you can tell me of these things from the 90s, which happened first. So do I have to rank them in order? Nope, I'm going to give you two things at a time. Okay. And you're going to tell me which one of those things. Okay, I like it. Go ahead. All right, which of these two things happened first? The release of Nirvana's Nevermind album or the premiere of Friends on television? I'm going to say... I'm going to say Friends. Nirvana's Nevermind was released on September 24th, 1991, while Friends premiered on September 22nd, 1994. So it's funny because I in my head I went Friends is like ninety four ish, and then I was like Nirvana. I don't think they were earlier than that ninety one. Okay, wow. Yeah, I didn't realize they were that early. All right, number two. Which of these things happened first? Spice Girls Wannabe reaches number one on the Billboard one hundred, or the MP three player was released. Oh, I feel like it's kind of. A trick. I feel like you want me to say Spice, but I'm going to go with MP3 player. It's, it's earlier. Yeah, the first real-time software MP3 player was released in on September 9th, 1995, while Spice Girls reached number one on February 22nd, 1997. Okay. Good job. All right, got one. Very good. Number three, which of these things happened first? The airing of the first episode of The Simpsons as a standalone show or Nelson Mandela's release from prison? Cool. Simpsons has been around since since Jim Thorpe was playing. Uh, it sure seems that way. I'm going to go with Simpsons. Any guesses on the release? I thought they were released in like 88 or 89. So I'm going to say 1990. So Nelson Mandela was released from prison on February 11th, 1990. The Simpsons first episode premiered on December 17th, 1989. Got it. Okay. Very good. Look at you. All right. Number four, which of these things happened first? The release of Titanic or the death of Princess Diana? I'm going to say they both were in the same year. Why do you want to say that? I uh, just, so Titanic is 96, I want to say, and I think Diana was the same, pretty sure. Okay. I'm going to go with, say Diana was like June, give or take. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with Princess Diana. Well, you got it right. Okay. However, Princess Diana died on August 31st, 1997. And the Titanic was released on December 19th, 1997. Seven. Okay. So I was off by a year, but still got it. Okay. Cool. You got it. Awesome. All right. And lastly, which of these two things happened first? Michael Jordan's first retirement or the launch of the PlayStation in Japan? Does he, oh, I would say when did Space Jam come out? Because that was when he had first retired, but then he went back to baseball. I don't have that information readily available. 
I'm going to say he retired in 98 for the first time. Okay. I'm going to say PlayStation in Japan was, I'm going to say it was before that. So Michael Jordan announced his first retirement from the NBA on October 6th, 1993. Oh my gosh. Woo. And the PlayStation was launched in Japan on December 3rd, 1994. 93 was his first retirement. I'm doing quotes. His first retirement. Yep. Wow. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed our uh, 49% 90s themed uh, podcast today. That was a lot of fun. We had some really fun games there. That was a good time. Yeah, some good combos. That was a good time. Um, the beer was good. I'd definitely get it again. Yeah, See, I like the cider. It's a little, little warm in my stomach now, but yeah, that might be a dangerous I think one I'm gonna to have, have another one. two or three of. Okay, well, it's a drink at your it reminds risk. me of those. Right. You ever had any of those like mango habanero or mango jalapeno margaritas? Absolutely. They are so good. Yeah, and it, it, it's delicious. And then after like five minutes, it's, your <laughs> stomach feels like an oven. You're like, hmm, what's going on down there? <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, but thank everyone that's so, listening and watching. Um we will see you guys next time. Take care, everyone.